Order of play, 8.20 remaining, 7 to nothing. The Beavers of Oregon State on top. And right now, the Fighting Irish on offense for the second time this evening. As you look at the interim head coach, Kent Breyer, who is all there, who was also the defensive coordinator. And uh, Mike Riley for Oregon State. Darius Walker checks into the ball game. Following that pass interference call, it's a first down. And the Irish go with a reverse, and what a defensive play. Breaks off the tackle, and Astasio, and now he's going to be gang tackled. Way back at the 23-yard line, Trent Bray on the stop. It's a loss of 14. Yeah, Alvin Smith was in there right away to stop that play. On the kick return right here to set this whole field position up for Oregon State. Strader made the kick return, put Derek Anderson in pretty good field position. Here's a strike. Derek Anderson, 7 0. Throwing to Gillette for the touchdown. He was 3 of 4, 75% of that opening drive. As you look at uh, Strader, who had that long return, a career high for him. And Brady Quinn, the quarterback for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, is the man who was shaken up. So very quickly, Pat Dillingham, the senior out of the state of California, is warming up on the sideline. Can anything else happen to these kids? No, they've had about everything happen. We talked about Tyro Willingham being fired. And the players didn't know if they wanted to play in the game. Kent Bear, they asked him to be the interim head coach. They had exams. They hired Charlie Weiss. They're out here practicing. All of a sudden, now they get their quarterback hurt. I said early, they need some good things to happen early because they've been through so much. A roller coaster. You know, I think inadvertently he got poked in the eye on this play. He's trying to block, and you see the defender putting a hand up, trying to ward him off. And that's uh, Bill Swancott. And... Uh, finger went through that face mask and you could see he's having trouble out of that right eye see it right now you don't want to put your quarterback blocking on the best defensive lineman <laughs> swan cut <laughs> that's a loose situation Darius Walker on the draw play to the right side and this obviously fooled Nobody as Oregon State with the second down and long was looking for the number two quarterback to keep it on the ground and it's Bray and Alvin Smith who combine on the tackle. Notre Dame must run the football against this Oregon State team or they're in trouble because Oregon State real good in pass defense. We talked about their corners Eric Williams Brandon Browner they'll shut you down on the outside. Well, the third tailback, Marcus Wilson, a senior out of Staten Island, New York, checks in. He wears number 11. And he is the lone setback with Dillingham. Middle screen. Ball is caught. It is hit. It is loose. And now they say incomplete pass. McKnight was the intended receiver. Well, Oregon State really looks good in the first two series. Ellison, Keith Ellison, number four, in there right away on the quick screen to McKnight. Well, Doyle Jackson was right there. It happened right in front of him, and as you could see, it was a bang-bang play just as it got to the receiver McKnight's hands. It was knocked right out, so incomplete pass. Strouder again, the deep man, and it'll be number 19, D.J. Fitzpatrick, kicking the ball away. And it is blocked. First one he's had blocked the entire year. Picked up and returned to the two-yard line is Doggett. Derek Doggett. Made the block. Uh, you know, I thought I wouldn't jinx him. I was about to say I hadn't written up. <laughs> Hasn't been blocked the entire year. And he gets this one. Watch it. Doggett with good pressure, blocked, but he still got his right hand up there to block the kick. Mike, for all intent and purposes, oh, he was he, he was a contained man. He, he was not there to block the and ball. And the punter was moving to his side. Can't give Oregon State's offense field position that they got on the punt return, the punt block. So the ball resting at the four-yard line for the Beavers and a first down and goal. Play action. Anderson looking, going to be hit, and he is sacked. And that is Button Zach. 
Kyle, a senior out of Freehold, New Jersey. 32 career starts and a three-year starter. And Anderson is fortunate he didn't turn it right back over to the Irish. Yeah, Derek Anderson, now early in the year, he would throw some footballs and get some interceptions. Uh, he had 17 interceptions this year. They're very good in the red zone, as you can attest to by that graphic. 16 touchdowns, 13 field goals. This is where the big tight end, Joe Newton, is uh, very valuable down here. Newton wears number 89. Look for him. Pass. Anderson. Here we go. This is what we're talking about. Joe Newton. Touchdown. 11 yards. Tom, when you have a tight end like Joe Newton, you get him against a linebacker in safety. Big advantage. 6'7", 244 against Derek Curry, the linebacker. Boy, watching their walkthrough, not just in the red zone, but particularly short yardage situations and inside the 20, they threw a lot of plays to him. Yeah, Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, one of the best in the country. High pass, ball is down, Cerna's got it, and we have a 14 to nothing Oregon State lead, 541 left in his opening quarter, and one more look at it as Newton, you see him get free. Gets by the coverage of Derek Curry, and it's 14 to nothing. ESPN's presentation of the 2004 Insight Bowl. Brought to you by Insight, provider of IT solutions for the way you work. And in part by Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Jeep, trail rated capability. Don't go off road without it. So we are back in the difficult situation, Mike. If you're going to give up early points, you got to at least make the other team pay for it. Oregon State has driven just 31 yards for their first two touchdowns. And wow, and that's easy pickings right there. Good field position by the kicking game. Special teams, Oregon State. Cerna to uh, kick it off. 541 left to play in this opening quarter. Cerna's kick. This one a little bit deeper, but it also is returnable. From the six yard line is Campbell. Up the near sideline, will make it to the 20, and let's check back with Reese Davis. Reese, what do you got for us? Around the Independence Bowl, wound up the way it always does. It seems a close game. Josh Betts, Miami, Ohio, picked off by all Big 12 defensive back Ellis Hobbs of Iowa State. Just a Cyclone second bowl win. Five of the last six Independence Bowls decided by four points or less, including this one. Dan McCartney and the Cyclones get the victory. Okay, Reese, our situation 14 to nothing. We are happy to report to Notre Dame fans that Brady Quinn, the sophomore out of Dublin, Ohio, back in a quarterback after getting uh, jabbed in the eye. Running play, there is a wall. Absolutely nothing as Grant is hit by Ellison. And let's go back to the touchdown, Mike, and exactly what happened. Ron, Joel Newton, there's a linebacker. It's tight end's going to break a corner route. Derek Curry inside is going to try to defend against him. He sticks him and then runs a corner route. Perfect throw by Derek Anderson. Seven points. You need to understand he doesn't need to break by you too far at 6'7", 250 yeah. because he's going to have the reach over most even linebackers at that size. So you see the average field position, Oregon State, opponents 40, and at their own 27, the starting spots for Notre Dame. Draw play to Grant, and he'll have a couple of tough yards, and that is it. Talked about Oregon State's defense. They'll play with nine in the box. So you, you're going to run against extra guys because their corners are so good on the outside. They just line up and play bump and run, take away the wide receivers. Brady Quinn's going to have to hit some passes here against this defense. Loosen them up. With Stovall, there. Stovall unable to go tonight. Shelton Shelf. unable to go tonight. And they're missing their size and speed, Michael. Third down and 10. 
line to make. They need to take it out to the 32. Pressure gets the ball away and got this one complete. And that is McKnight. McKnight at the 50-yard line and finally being pushed out of bounds across the way. And a flag comes in. He may have been caught for a late hit there after a 35-yard gain. Browner. I talked about men coverage and I talked about these corners. You have to run crossing routes against them. If they're going to play man coverage, then make them defend the crossing routes. Ryan McKnight did that. Crossing route was open. There is no foul. No foul. First down. Raymond McKnight. Brady Quinn's going to get pressure. Here's a crossing route underneath the shallow cross. You have both wide receivers cross. Shallow area. McKnight comes open. You know, I'll tell you what, this is a really good job by Quinn just to get this ball away. He was not only being engaged, he was being uh, hit pretty hard just as he got the pass off. So it's a first down, the ball just outside the Oregon State 42-yard line. And Darius Walker, number three, checks in tailback. He gets the handoff, maybe a couple, and that is about it. Aaron Andrews, let's check back on the sideline. What do you have for us? Well, Ron, obviously, as we've discussed throughout the game, so many emotions and motivations surrounding this Notre Dame team tonight. And the one thing going into this game these players have agreed on is that they want to win it for their former head coach, Tyrone Willingham. Senior running back Ryan Grant said, with everything that we've been through, we need to finish it off right for Coach Willingham. And, Ron, an additional motivation for these players and coaches. When Willingham first came to Notre Dame, he said one of his major goals was to end Notre Dame's 11-year bowl losing streak so you know that weighs heavily on their mind tonight Ron well I know that's uh, the majority of things that the kids talked about trying to reverse out in the pass throws it almost intercepted that was intended for Fasano the tight end he took quite a gamble there as Ben Orso was all over him Jeff was really applying the pressure but the the cover guy not only had a chance to knock it down he could have gambled and yeah, intercepted he really could have no, Aaron was talking about Kent Bear. He spoke at the luncheon the other day, the uh, Inside Dot Bowl luncheon, and they introduced him as interim head coach. He, in, when he got to the podium, he said the head coach of this football team is Tyrone Willingham. So he's a guy that has been put in the spotlight here. He would rather not be the interim head coach. Looks as though Notre Dame is going to call a timeout. They had used too much uh, time off the play clock. It was down to three. And let's take a commercial timeout. 3.08 remaining. First quarter. It is the Beavers. 14 to nothing. So we are back. Welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona. The inside bowl. And it is a third down situation. Notre Dame. They need to take the ball down to just outside the 32-yard line to keep this drive going. You talked about Fasano, the tight end. He's another guy that they got to use Notre Dame because against man coverage, he's going to be against the safety. Quinn, one of three, 35 yards tonight. He's been sacked once for a loss of four. Flags are down. Ron, penalties. Yards the spot, third down remaining. Penalties, block punt, big long punt return. You talk about focus now. Early signs of a team that didn't have real good focus in practice coming in into this game. Show with a five-yard penalty. Now a really difficult third down and about 14 and a half yards to get the first. Great protection this time. Going to go on top. Puts it way in the air. Collision. And now here comes the flag at the five-yard line. Yeah. 
Samarja, the intended receiver, and it was uh, Williams who was covering him defensively. Let's see which way they're going to call this. Going to go against Notre Dame. Eric, Eric Williams is in coverage, bump and run coverage. Kent Bear does not like this call. Samarza, the receiver. Williams got his hands on him, but yeah, I don't think that's a good call there on the Notre Dame. If, if anything, it's a no call. Both got their hands out, out there. Yeah, I can see Eric Williams fall back like he was pushed. A lot of pushing down the field. That was pass interference by the offense. Think about when you're the interim head coach, you got to argue the calls too. Ken Barra being the assistant to Tyrone Willingham, he was busy preparing for the next play, but you have to argue the calls. You've got to get on the officials a little bit and make sure they notice you over there. DJ Fitzpatrick had his last punt blocked, and as we mentioned a couple of times, he had not won, had not had one blocked the entire season, and it really was a contained man, and he moved right into it. Much quicker on this one. A wobbly spiral. Fair catch is signal for and made at the 16-yard line. Trotter's a man who makes the catch. 32nd or 30 yards on the punt. So 250 left to play in this uh, third quarter. Charlie Weiss, the uh, the new head coach at Notre Dame, coming up in the second half. We'll visit with him up in uh, New England and find out uh, that how things have been going and uh, you can imagine what a busy schedule he's had as a new head coach and also maintaining his offensive coordinator position with the Patriots. He better be calling recruits. Um, Need some players here. Sure, I'm sure he will address that to us. First down from the 17 yard line. Anderson going to throw. Got a man out there, and it is caught at the 48, Mike Haas. The junior out of Portland Jesuit, Dwight Alec had him covered about as well as you can cover, and he came down with the reception 37 yards later. Came into this game, Mike Haas, with 81 catches, a former walk-on that has earned it. The right to be called the, one of the best receivers in the Pac-10 or in the country, for that matter. Good concentration here on the high pass. Two-man route by Oregon State, respecting the rush of Notre Dame's front four. Also a really nice job by Haas. You could see him adapting to the throw. A couple of uh, short chop steps to bring himself in position to go up and make the reception. And he'll throw again. This one out of the backfield, 40, 35. He get it to Joe Newton to tie it in. And he is finally bumped out of bounds at around the 28 and a half yard line. Ron, the last six games for Oregon State, they got off to a fast start. In the first quarter in those games, 53 points. They held their opponents to 13. Already 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. So they're used to getting off to a fast, quick start for Mike Riley. Well, here's a graphic on what you're talking about. First quarter breakdown. It's, that's pretty tough right there to overcome. On first down. Good protection. Deep over the middle. Had a man there, and it went right between Mike Haas's hands. And he can't believe it, but I think the ball might have been deflected just a tad, and that was enough to throw him off stride and to miss it. Otherwise, the ball was there, and it's six more. I like what Oregon State's doing here. You see Mike Haas going down the football field. Yep. I just think he, uh, he lost, lost concentration on that ball, but Oregon State is really throwing the ball down the field. Short passing game. They're stretching this Notre Dame defense. Second down and 10. Trying to set up a screen. Notre Dame has smelled this one out. And he just throw it away. And now here comes a flag in.
Now they're going to call a, I think it's Shoney they're calling for illegally downfield. Shoning, the redshirt freshman out of Pendleton, Oregon, is uh, the man who was who was downfield. Coaches really like him. Uh, very, very young, and they think this uh, youngster at 6'3", 303 right now is going to turn into a heck of a ball player and has done uh, a really good job for him this season. So second down and a long 15. Short drop this time, got this one complete, and that's Mike Paz again. And you see why he has the high number of receptions. They'll just throw to him all night if you'll give him room. Ron, when we did the LSU game, I know the LSU coaches talked about you must know where Mike Haas is on every play because he's a favorite receiver for Derek Anderson. They have a feel together. They believe in each other. 81 catches coming in to this game. Well, he was over 1,000 yards uh, last year in 03. Anderson now 9 of 13, 127 yards and two touchdowns. Third down and short. They need the 18 and a half if they're going to keep this one going or have to go for a field goal. Notre Dame fakes a blitz up the middle, getting good pressure from inside. Pass is thrown behind the receiver, and that's a nice job. 75, Chris Frome was the man who was coming with the pressure and forced him out of the pocket. With no running game for Oregon State. They're going to throw the football. Almost every play, their offensive line really has to hold up. Well, Cerna, what a story. We talked about it off the top of the telecast. 16 of 17 on the year. He missed three extra points down to Baton Rouge. I never felt any more sorry for a youngster than I did him that night. They lost it by one point. And he has just really come on and done well. And I knew the minute we bragged on him that he was going to come up with a miss just barely wide right. So let's take a timeout. 66 seconds remaining opening quarter. Oregon State 14 to nothing. So we are back. You look at Cerna on the bench. He may not let us do any more of his <laughs> ball games. Right now, I want to show you something new. Let's take another look at the kick. This is Kick Track, an exclusive tracking technology from ESPN. It indicates the exact position of the ball. There is a camera downfield on the 50. There's obviously one behind, and they correlate, and they'll show you. The line is red when it is missed. It's green when it's good. And they can also tell you how far the kick would have gone. Was it good? If it was good. And also how much he missed it by and kick track says he missed it by two feet to the right just well, barely barely missed it great coaching technique because you could go talk to him if you could use that you can but uh, you could tell him you're two feet off two feet off so first and ten for the Irish from the 20 and the pitch back goes to Grant and Grant with a head of steam and that's Close to the longest running play for them tonight. Muset on the stop. Aaron Andrews, let's check back with you. Well, Ron, normally during final exams week for Notre Dame, the head coaching staff gives the players the week off. But during this week's final exams, Ken Bear told me he was going to get his players out there on the practice field because he need, thought they needed some time off. He said with all the distractions that went on, he wanted them out there practicing. And then when it come time for final exams, they went home. He said that was probably the best move he has made. He got him off the campus, away from people, asking questions. Who's the next coach? Was it fair? Tyrone Willingham was fired and so forth. He told me that was the best move he's made, Ron. Okay. Uh, Aaron, this running play goes to Grant, and he is knocked down by Piscatelli at the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a third down. And clock is winding down, probably the final play of this opening quarter. So they pick up a good chunk of about eight yards on first down, but then they lose on second down. And we'll wait until the second quarter to see exactly what the Irish come up with as we head to the second 15. It is Oregon State 14 and Notre Dame nothing. And it's all come through the air. Delivered by Derek Anderson.
So welcome back to Phoenix. If you've just joined us and you say, wow, Oregon State on top 14 to nothing. I also would remind you that because of special teams and a blocked punt, Oregon State only had to travel a total of 31 yards in their two drives to score. So Brady, Quinn, and company with a third down. They need to take it just around the 31-yard line to pick up the first. Flag comes down. He's going to be sacked at the 18-yard line. Second time they've gotten to him. Charles Scott is the man who got to him. We may have offensive holding as well, Mike. Chaz Scott, a linebacker. They brought Chaz Scott. You're right, the holding call. They'll turn it down. Get fourth down situation. Force the punt. Might have been on Ryan Harris, the uh, left tackle, number 68. Here's the play run. Ryan Harris blocking. Off. Got his hands outside. Gets Bill Swancut. Swancut causes a lot of headaches for every game that uh, he faces. Those uh, tackles have got to think, I'm glad this night's over when it is over. This is interesting because Oregon State may take this penalty. The way Notre Dame is struggling on offense. Foul is holding. No, they're not Number 68 by the offense. That foul is declined. It will be fourth down. Please reset the game clock to 14.50. Reset game clock, 14.50. Doyle Jackson, our referee tonight, and he is retiring after this evening's ball game after 22 years of service. We'll talk more about that as the evening goes on. And uh, right now, a situation where D.J. Fitzpatrick has got to punt it away, and he better be careful with Sammy Strotter because he showed early that uh, he could strut and get down the field quickly. Here's the boot. End over in, away from Strotter. It's going to go out of bounds. This thing may not be to midfield. And here is a look at game track and what has occurred so far in this one. Oregon State strikes first. This is Gillette catching the pass over the middle for the touchdown. And in the block play to watch this, the contained man just reaches out. Making sure there was no run, just reached out and blocked the ball first for Fitzpatrick, and he hits the big tight end Newton in the end zone, and that's how we stand at 14 to nothing. And now a very short punt, and they have the ball, Oregon State, at the 46 and a half yard line. It's only a 25 yard boot. Yeah, field position has been great for the Beavers. Ryan Cole comes in at tailback, number 33. And slips on that wet area in the middle of the turf. Now going to run it, and he's going to have the first down. Might be the best running play Oregon State has. Derek Anderson setting up for a pass. I believe they've run two other times in this football game. Derek Anderson shows you a pretty good speed. He's a pro prospect at quarterback. I'll Very you. accurate passer. Shows his ability athletically on that run. Oregon State now the third time that they have started in Notre Dame territory tonight. Talk about giving up valuable field position and putting your defense in harm's way. That's exactly what has happened with the Irish so far tonight. About to go into 14 minutes to play until halftime. And Anderson will put it in the stomach of Cole, and he is going to be knocked down after a very short game. Ron, the Oregon State game plan, block and protect Derek Anderson because they're going to throw. Throw 60-plus times, get Haas and Newton in, in the game. On defense, continue the trend of strong first quarter starts. They did that. Crowd the line of scrimmage, stop the run. They've done that so far. A rare run for Oregon State. Second down and long from the 30-yard line. Anderson retreats, swings it out of the backfield, and throws that one low. Ryan Cole, the intended receiver, 
If you're Mike Riley right now, you're saying to yourself, hey, we've had great field position. We had missed a field goal. We're back down here again. We better get some points here because Notre Dame's not going to stay asleep a long time here. You don't want to give away that field position. Justin Tuck, who is not able to play tonight, but on the sideline in his uh, game jersey, trying to stir this crowd up a little bit. He's got a towel and the waving it around, asking the crowd to get up and make some noise as the crowd's kind of been out of it. And it, you recognize that in the sideline as a player. So Justin trying to say, hey, get up and help us. Third and long, here comes pressure. Anderson will be sacked back at the 41-yard line. And the bigness of that play is Anderson throws it up and knocks the referee's hat off. And Doyle Jackson had a comment back to him. This takes him totally out of field goal range right here. Yeah, forces the punt. Good pressure by Notre Dame. We talked about the offensive line of Oregon State has to protect Derek Anderson because you don't have the threat of the run. Button Zach is a man who came up with the sack. Only the second punt of the night. Palescu waiting for the snap at the 45 yard line. And here's the boot. He pooches it near sideline. And it is going to be touched, almost caught, and knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. A well executed special teams play. 42 yards in the boot. And again, Notre Dame takes over with very, very poor field position. Well, tonight's first and ten yellow line brought to you by Crestor. 12 minutes, 23 seconds remaining in this first half. 14 to nothing to Oregon State. And you see the ball at the five and a half yard line. Do you dare throw down here? Yeah, Mike? I think you have to. You got to get out of here. That yellow line's very important to Notre Dame. They need to get this ball out of here. It's Fasano, the tight end in motion. And they pitch it back. Walker, not much on the outside. Darius will fight his way forward to around the nine-yard line. Aaron Andrews, let's check back with you. Well, Ron, not only is there emotion surrounding this Notre Dame team, but there are pretty heavy rumors surrounding this team as well. Before the game, we were hearing rumors. Again, I want to stress rumors that there were three Notre Dame coaches that accepted jobs to join Tyrone Willingham with the University of Washington. Again, rumors. We are hearing interim head coach, defensive coordinator Kent Bear. Also, offensive line coach Mike Denbrock and secondary coach Stephen Wilkes. Again, rumors. Hopefully, we can find out if these are true before the game ends tonight. Ron? All righty. Second down. That's McKnight in motion back toward the line of scrimmage. They keep it on the ground again. And Oregon State, very difficult to run against. That's only a gain of a couple. Ellison and Bray combining on the stop. Adding to what Aaron's reporting, it's very difficult for this staff now because a lot of these coaches don't have jobs. And uh, Kent Bear talked about the doors are closed. And uh, Charlie Weiss comes in. And you got all this movement around the office but there's a lot of coaches in this football game that don't have jobs so they don't know where they're working after this football game third down and they need to take it to the 16 yard line otherwise they're going to have to punt it away you can see Grant slip just a little bit from that moisture that uh, came their way pass overthrown McKnight the intended receiver and well, in case struggling. you joined us late, the roof was open so the skydivers could come in and it rained. Took it a little bit for it to get closed and uh, the field just a little bit slick. There's a great side here at the uh, Bank One ballpark. Got just a little moisture on it. Notre Dame's offense is struggling. They can't find anything to put their hat on. Can't run the ball, can't throw it right now. Fourth time that DJ Fitzpatrick has had to punt tonight. This one, a short kick driver caught at the 47 and returned by Strotter. And Strotter is uh, corral this time at the 45. So it's 36 on the punt and three on the return. And for the fourth time tonight, Oregon State will take it over in Notre Dame territory. 
Another reminder in the second half, Charlie Weiss, the uh, new head coach at Notre Dame, will talk with him on a phone hookup coming up in the third quarter. We'll ask him some of these questions that probably you've been asking yourself, but as Mike said, about recruiting and also having to wear two hats, the distractions for both teams, both the Patriots and also for Notre Dame. I'm going to talk about that after this play. It's tough on Notre Dame right now, tough on Charlie Weiss for recruiting him. I'll get into that. And that after this play. Wright and Bernard in the ball game now. Two setbacks for Oregon State. They send them both out. They throw a screen right in the middle. That's Bernard. Bernard going to have the first down. Cut it off at 15 and now 17 yards on the play. And one of the offensive linemen a little slow in getting up, but he's going to be okay, and he'll come back to the huddle. Mike, talk about that. And the, the, we talked about the distractions for these kids. Uh, it, people think, well, hey, I'm an adult. I might be able to handle a lot of this. These are young 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, and it is a tremendous distraction. Well, here's what happens. Us talking about Charlie Weiss. He's not in the office right now. You build the trust of the recruit right now. If you're a recruit at Florida State, you're going to see Bobby Bowden on your visit. USC, you're going to see Pete Carroll. You're not going to see Charlie Weiss right now because he's working on the New England Patriots. And the house business, Ron, when you go into the house right now, the coach, it's all about trust. It's all about communication, all about getting to know the head coach. You want to know that guy. You want to know what he's going to do. Now you can talk on the phone to him. It's not the same thing as being his, in his presence. Well, let me ask you this, and I want to ask him this question as well. Is it a great amount of help that he has done so well as the offensive coordinator at, uh, at New England? I mean, now, does that excite a high school kid? Does that get his attention oh, enough sure to does. get him to change a commitment even? I'm, I'm sure it does, but you still want to know the guy you're going to play for. Yeah. The moms, they want to cook the apple pie for the head coach when he comes in the house. They want him to sit down at the table, talk to him. No offense, but Charlie doesn't need that. Second down and short, screen pass. That's Bernard, and he's going to be short of the first down as he'll be tackled at the 19 by Hoyt. Brandon Hoyt. We have called his name already a lot tonight. I'll say this, Ron. The first year of recruiting is the toughest when you take a job because all the staffs have been working for a year, two years on recruits. You come into the head coaching job. Now, the guys are going to go to Notre Dame because it's Notre Dame. They're going to go no matter who's the head coach. But the guys out there, the, the special recruits, USC's pounding them, Tennessee's pounding them, uh, Florida's pounding them. All those coaches are just trying to get those guys to come to their school. Third down and short. You can see they need to take it to the 18-yard line. Looking to throw. Gets it away complete at the 11-yard line, and he's gone back to Joe Newton again. Newton and Haas have been the major destroyers, so to speak, and Newton is such a huge target at 6'7". That's good for 10 yards right there. He already has a touchdown pass, as does Gillette, and Hawes has been all over the place. So, 49 catches for Joe Newton coming in to this game. Haas is another guy you got to watch in the red zone area down here. Quick post. Three-year starter Matt Brock comes out over the football, number 73, senior out of Roseburg, Oregon. Notre Dame coming with the blitz off the corner. Picked up nicely. Pass right over the middle at the five. Touchdown, Dan Haynes. And they say, hey, let's spread out the wealth with the tight ends. This time, Haynes gets it. And Notre Dame's not good enough on offense to keep giving this field position to Oregon State. Special teams has been the difference here in the first half. Mike Riley. Obviously very excited about the way his ball club is playing in this uh, first half of this ball game. Cerna to attempt the extra point. And he got this one right down the middle. So let's take a timeout. 7.49 left. And take one more look at the play. Pass. This one to Dan Haynes in the big tight end. Rambles into the end zone. Touchdown. 
Oregon State, all three by way of pass. ESPN's presentation of the 2004 Insight Bowl. Brought to you by Insight, provider of IT solutions for the way you work. And in part by the next Ford Super Duty. Tougher, stronger, smarter. And City, proud sponsor of the 2005 Rose Bowl. New Year's Day on ABC. Phoenix, Arizona. Well, we're playing in a beautiful building tonight, the Bank One Ballpark. Nicknamed affectionately the Bob. This is a terrific complex, Mike. We walked all over it yesterday and Great got to place. look at the baseball configuration and now the football configuration. And they, uh, they thought of every amenity that, that I can see. Very high. This is returnable. Spinner right on the sideline at the 10. And this is Campbell. And Campbell slides down as he crosses the 15-yard line. Now let's talk about game plans. How about Notre Dame? Well, this is what you would put game, down. Run ball, chew up the clock. They have minus five yards rushing right now. Beat man coverage with the crossing routes. They did that one time. They got to go to more bunch formation too. Keep the ball in front of them in the secondary. They've been having the ball thrown in front of them, behind them, everywhere. Make Oregon State turn the ball over. So far, no turnovers. So it's a first down. Notre Dame again with a with not so good field position was able scrimmage for the 16. It's McKnight in motion for the play action. Here comes pressure up the middle. Going to try to leg this one out. 20 puts a head down and is collared about two yards short. And they may have gotten the face mask. That might be the first down that gets them started here, getting them away from the, the shadow of their own goalpost, so to speak. Might have been Mitch Newson, number well, five. An incidental five yard face mask, number five. On the defense, Penley is five yards from the end of the run, which will result in the first down. First down for Notre Dame. Brady Quinn, not seeing anything open, decided to run. Here's the face mask by number five, just reaches out and grabs a hold of it, brings Brady Quinn down. So they move the chains, and now, Mike, they have it at the 30-yard line. You look at Swan cut. He causes a headache on every down. And he's to the open side of the field, so they run the other way. Tries to bounce it outside. Head high tackle on Wilson, and that's Eric Williams who was there to make the stop. Just nothing doing. And, Mike, again, you might explain exactly what they do with their safeties and how many men they have within just a couple of yards of the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame thinks it's 15 right now, but when they go to two-back set, Notre Dame's in two backs. You're playing against nine guys uh, in the running game. The two corners are taking the wide receivers, locking on, and man for man, you got those safeties sitting right there on the running game. So this time, Quinn will go under center on second and ten. And they swing the pass out to Marcus Wilson. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And what a play. That's Bill Swancutt, who came all the way from that right defensive end position, 6'4", 259, and got out there and ran the play down. Yeah, Mike Riley talked about him yesterday in practice. He said he never misses a workout, never misses a practice. He's cut right there, and he stays stays playing the football. But he is really a guy that's a great example in college football that doesn't take a playoff, doesn't miss a practice. Notre Dame recruited him. Ryan Grant comes in a tailback now with the third down and nine. Pressure coming up the middle. Going to run out of it, and he's got enough room to get the first down. 40 at the 44-yard line, and it'll go for the first down before Musen finally is over there defensively to make the stop. And when a gain you, of 14 yards. Excuse me, Ron. When you do play man coverage and the quarterback decides to run, you're running with your back to the football. You see the defensive backs running downfield. Now they fight, figure out it's run by the quarterback. 
try to recover, but the first down by Brady Quinn. Well, you think uh, Musa doesn't have some closing speed? Oh, he was he on that good. play in a second. At the game of 14, Mike, by the way, is the longest running play of the night. And in fact, I'll check with Biggie, maybe the longest play of the night. The second longest, but uh, the longest running play. Straight ahead, tripped up from the backfield. And maybe a gain of a half yard, and that's going to be about it. As uh, Pollard is the man who got a handout to trip up Grant. Clock Run. runs 520 left until halftime. Yeah, the receiver, Stovall and Sheldon being out has really hurt this offense. They, they missed their speed, uh, yeah. don't you think, Mike? They, they're locked down on those wide receivers. The wide receivers not getting open. On the first play, Notre Dame ran a halfback pass. It was wide open. Oregon State reached out and held Notre Dame. Didn't get called. So they, they had a big play on first down. First play of the game. Didn't get it. See Stovall on the sideline. Injured a hamstring against uh, SC. His pitch back and uh, sliding down is Grant. Ellison is right there with him. That's why I'm surprised a little bit that Fasano has not been a bigger part of the tight ends. Collins, Palmer, work the inside of the football field. They can't win on the outside. I don't think Notre Dame, Carlisle Holiday is out there, a quarterback that's moved a wide receiver. Great leader on this football team, number seven. Here's Carlisle right there, and you know his story. He was a starting quarterback here for a couple of seasons for Notre Dame. Gets the ball away and threw it in traffic and has it complete. That's enough for the first down as Samarska is there to make the catch. Samarska, the sophomore out of Valparaiso, Indiana. It's a good this throw. It was a, right between two defenders. This is the uh, bunch set. And against man coverage, it's a pretty good call here. All three wide receivers together make the defensive backs work against the bunch formation really good throw by Brady Quinn and they have the first down Quinn now three of seven for 43 yards Darius Walker left side spins off one tackle he'll take it across the 45 and down to the 44 Ellison again tripped him up I knew this defense was uh, very good in the opening game against LSU. They had LSU offensive uh, running game. They stopped it. They stopped some of the passing game. LSU really came from behind late to win that game. And in fact, it was Anderson after a turnover by LSU who got a little greedy and threw a, an answering interception. And Oregon State was plenty close enough to have picked up three points if not a touchdown. That's Walker in motion to the top of your screen. Short drop, quick out pass, and just a little too high for Anastasio. Brady Quinn, Kent Bear talked about him. He said he's been up and down all year. Tremendous leader for this offensive football team. Out of Kaufman High School in Dublin, Ohio. Right around the Columbus area. Well, this is the 10th play of the drive. It started back at Notre Dame's 16-yard line. Kent Braid looking up at the clock, and there's not a lot left. Two minutes and 38 seconds until halftime. His club down 21 to nothing. Blitz coming off the corner. Steps up, drills the ball, got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it is complete and the flag comes down. Samarza was the intended receiver and it was Browner who was covering. Now let's see who they point the finger at and say is the guilty one. Notre Dame's got to throw more deep throws because you could get a interference against these corners. Brandon Browner called on this play. Have to take your shot. On the outside, Browner does a good job of contact. 
Oh, I don't know about that one either. I think what he called, Mike, is when he came back with the left arm to really yeah. close him off. Wow. But as you said, very, time. Yeah, very, very close. Game of contact. Not dancing. So 231 showing until halftime. And Notre Dame now at the 29-yard line. They need to finish this drive off. Been a good drive by Notre Dame. A deepest penetration of the night. They started it back at the 16-yard line. And they're in double figures on the number of plays that they have run. Straight ahead with Walker. Walker finds an opening. Has five, has ten. Count it off at 15 as Musin will make the tackle. Darius Walker, the leading rusher, averaging 74 yards rushing per game. Sullivan with an outstanding block. John, a sophomore out of Old Greenwich, Connecticut. Very aggressive uh, player. He was injured against Southern Cal. Didn't know if he was going to be 100% in this one, but obviously uh, is thereabouts. Helped pave the way on that run by Darius Walker. Run. Oregon State, you serve tight end. You got Anthony Fasano down here, number 88 in motion. He'll keep it on the ground. It's Walker. And Walker will fight his way for three, maybe four. Coker, Curtis Coker, number 98, there to make the stop for the Beavers. Walker's got six touchdowns this year. Freshman record, Autry Denson with eight. Good look at Darius, 5'11", 200, freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. 743 yards. Station hit behind the line of scrimmage. And just not much a running back can do when the defense gets that kind of penetration. Looks as though Houston, one of the first men to come through to uh, to make the hit and also swan cut. Talk about swan cut and yeah, inside move. Relentless. So let's take a timeout. 104 remaining until halftime. 21 to nothing. Beavers. Hi. I'm Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano. You know, there's nothing... For his excitement with the, those two young fans to go visit or have come visit him. Quint steps up in the pocket, drills the pass, got his man wide open, and there's the guy Mr. Godfrey was talking about, Anthony Fasano, touchdown Irish. Great drive by Notre Dame and wow. Fasano against a linebacker, Jonathan Pollard, on a crossing route, wide open. You talk about a great drive, 13 plays, 84 yards, 6 minutes and 53 seconds. And that's a team that has been, <laughs> to put it nicely, slumbering on offense so far tonight. But they're on the board now trying to make it a 14-point ball game. Ball is down, and the kick right down the middle by Fitzpatrick. So with 56 seconds showing until halftime, the Irish are on the board, and it's 21 to 7. Here's the throw to Fasano. Watch him break the tackle right there, and he'll step in for the score. 14 points. The lead is cut to. We'll be right back. Patrick will kick it off for Notre Dame. Here's uh, Lamar Heron, the deep man. They get a good kickoff return here. They got 56 seconds, three timeouts. They're a passing team. Sometimes you can jump out to a lead and go to sleep. No, you're right, and, and you know, I haven't been a head coach for as long as you were. Oh, no, once it slips away, it's hard to get back, isn't it? Yes, it is, but the Oregon State is a quick strike offense. This is Heron, 15, and he'll make it back to the 20, and that's it. Reese Davis, let's uh, check back in the studio with you. All right, Ron, coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, Trev and Mark will join me. The Red Hawks were grounded in the Independence Bowl. We'll also introduce you to their new head coach and talk a lot about Notre Dame's transition period as well as a firing 
Mile High City, not in football. We'll also discuss some of the many challenges Notre Dame head coach Charlie Weiss will face in the near future. And as often my job here is said, guys, I will bring some proper balance to the conversation like hey. I generally do. Boy. I don't even know who he is anymore. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I ruined a pair of shoes and socks last week. It was cold, but that deodorant thing is ridiculous. Pass caught at the 29-yard line and then dropped. Nice job of leading George Gillette. Couldn't hold on to it, and that'll stop the clock with 49 seconds remaining. When Kent Bear goes in at halftime, he's going to face a defensive team that's been through the ringer here in the first half but they are really have a one dimensional offense to contend with because Oregon State cannot run the football Mike the difficult thing is you start looking at 27 snaps that the defense has had to play which is not an inordinately high number and one of the primary reasons is because of that long drive just a moment ago with the Irish just scored but that's where as you said you got to be careful you're, you're missing Tuck, your best defensive lineman, and uh, you just you can't leave him out there forever because the fatigue really does take over, even yeah. though it's a very comfortable night here this evening and in Phoenix. You, and you're talking about pass plays, running down the football field, rushing the passer. Notre Dame showed blitz, and they stayed at home. Anderson out of the backfield. That one complete to Dan Haynes. And uh, again, the tight ends... A big part of their repertoire. Newton with a good first half. He caught a touchdown pass, as did Gillette. Howes has been all over the place, and Haynes caught a touchdown pass, number 83. Mike Riley talks about Derek Anderson. He said he's he's as good, he's going to be as good an NFL quarterback as he's been around. He's been around some good ones. This guy's a poised guy. Decision making that seemed to be coming to end of the season. You know, his biggest problem area. Got this one. Throws it complete. Pushed out of bounds. Joe Newton. Carlos Campbell trying to push the big fella out of bounds, and they will have it complete. Stop the clock. 33 seconds. Would not be surprised right now if they try to go downfield to Haas. Well, you see the numbers on Anderson, 66%. Three touchdowns for 171. It's Hawkins in motion. Play action, the ball well overthrown. Hawkins, who was in motion, is the intended receiver. Because they have run the ball so little tonight, that play action... Nobody took it an, an altering step whatsoever. No, you're you're right. <laughs> There's no threat of the run. The only run has been Derek Anderson on a scramble. Yeah. Picked up good yardage. Of course the sacks come off of that, but the Notre Dame with 38 rushing, only two for Oregon State. Uh, the Beavers 179 throwing it and 56 for Notre Dame in the air. 28 ticks left on the clock. Pressure this time right over the middle. Got it complete. Just left all alone. Tackle being made right there on the insignia is uh, Joe Newton, but it's gain of 24 yards. They have Notre Dame in a two-deep zone, which means safety's on the hash deep. And the tight end Joe Newton finds the hole. So timeout has been called. It will take it with him. 19 seconds left until halftime. Cerna loosens up on the sideline. His longest field goal this year, 55 yards. They've got a ways to go to move to that mark. And a reminder in the second half on a phone hookup, we'll talk with uh, Charlie Weiss, the new head coach at Notre Dame, and uh, pick his brain about what's been go going on in his life and having to wear two hats for both New England and Notre Dame about recruiting uh, just a lot of things that coming up in the second half so stay with us No 
Notre Dame corners came up, but then they move off the bump position. Everybody at home, only a three-man rush. Eight in coverage, deep over the middle. Got a man there. And I'm telling you what, Hoss probably should have had his second touchdown pass right there. And I think you can look at him slap the ball as he picks it up. He knows he should have had that for a touchdown. Boy, he was open again. Notre Dame secondary having a problem. Campbell, Carlos Campbell makes a judgment to go for the interception or to, to deflect the football. And the house just took his eyes off the ball. Leinert, Palco, both threw for five touchdown passes. Pittsburgh and USC the last two games for Notre Dame. Secondary has been torched. Sets to throw. Here comes pressure. Now he's going to run. Anderson got a safety valve open. Throws it complete. That's at the 34-yard line. Marcel Love. Now they're going to call a timeout with three seconds left. This would make it about a 51-yard attempt. Maybe 52. You talked about Alexis Cerna being a great story. One of the first guys that called him was former Notre Dame kicker John Carney. Told him it goes with the territory. Well, he missed his first three extra points. Uh, uh, this was against LSU, including the one that cost the Beavers the game in overtime. And it was just a night that, uh, as I said earlier, you felt so sorry for the youngster. Since then, he's hit all 24 extra points. He has hit now 16 of 18. He missed a, a field goal attempt back in the first half including a 55-yarder against Washington. So this one, and let's see, they're going to put it down. Looks as though it's going to be a 53-yard attempt. Ron, he hung in there. Most guys would have backed off and maybe sulked and quit. It says a lot for him and his head coach, Mike Riley. Mike Riley handled it very well, stayed with this young man. He, he moved in another kicker, but Cerna got his job back. So. It, Talks about perseverance. Well, he not only persevered, but uh, throughout his life, he's going to remember the lesson that was learned in 2004. And it's a very valuable lesson. 53 yards, the attempt that is about to be taken with three seconds showing on the clock. Kick track here. And we'll get an opportunity to look at it. You see it coming from the right hash mark. Good pass. Kick is on the way, and he has kicked it short and wide to the right. That yeah, tough kick right there, 53 yards. So Cerna misses two in the first half. And let's check down with Aaron Andrews in an interview with the head coach of Notre Dame. And you look at this. Uh, graphic right here neither team able to run the football on a consistent basis but that field position right there on 46 Oregon State needed to make more uh, out of what they had Notre Dame had poor field position the last drive like you said may have set the stage so Oregon State uh, prepares to to kick it off And the Irish will get an opportunity to uh, get something going again on back-to-back uh, -back drives here to, to close this gap of 14 points. This boot right here is going to go about 12 yards deep. And Aaron Andrews, let's check with you uh, down on the sideline. All right, Ron, I had a chance to speak with Oregon State head coach Mike Riley as he was coming out during the half. He said he was very happy, obviously, with the way his team played, but he said the one thing that concerned him, who could blame him, was that 84-yard touchdown drive by Notre Dame. He said it was very important this half to get a stop right on Notre Dame's drive. We'll see how they do, Ron. Okay, Aaron. Uh, obviously, it's a good start for Oregon State when you kick one into the end zone, and uh, there is no return. So the Irish go for their own 20-yard line. Grant, right side, and again, penetration. That's Keith Ellison, one of the linebackers who plays on the strong side. No game. Yeah, I, talk, I talked about 
how the first drive and Aaron Andrews talked about Mike Riley saying this is important to stop Notre Dame right now. Don't let them add momentum. Last drive, 84 yards. Had a penalty in there and seven points. Darius Walker checks in a tailback. And also Jerome Collins comes in a tight end number 48. Jerome was uh, was a linebacker, great athlete, now playing uh, at the tight end position. They play five different tight ends. Let's trade ahead with the running play, though, and Ellison is there to make the stop one more time. Darius Walker this time also helping was uh, Joe Lima. You talked about Jerome Collins, and when we talked to the Notre Dame coaches, they said someday he's going to be a pro. Because they like his hands, they like the ability to block. Pretty good target. So it's third down, and they need to take it to the 30-yard line unless they want to have to punt it right back to Oregon State. From a shotgun, four-man rush, steps up, got a man there, throws it complete. That is a nice pitch and catch. Samarza on the receiving end of a 20-yard strike. Williams making the tackle, but that's a good start for the Irish yeah, here in the second half. And Kent Bear with the empty set, which means he got all the receivers out there on that pattern. Stretch this defense out a little bit. Samarza against Eric Williams. The numbers on Quinn, 5 of 10, 75 yards, and a touchdown. McKnight in motion, and they swing the pass out, and it is caught by Powers Neal, and he went slipping and sliding around there and wound up with a gain of one, and that's about it. You remember that great catch and run he had against Pitt and wound up scoring the touchdown, which was huge in that ball game. That ball was thrown at his shoelaces. And Powers Neal reached down and uh, grabbed that football. Rashawn, nine catches this year, two touchdowns. And as we mentioned, that, that one uh, the one that was really effective against Pitt. Good look at number 90, Bill Swancutt. Draw play, hit behind the line of scrimmage, breaks the tackle. Darius Walker did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Singer is the man who came through first and made contact. Pretty Number 97. Good, pretty good defensive front, too. We talked about Seeger. We talked about Swan Cut, Alvin Smith, Joe Lemma. Pretty solid along that front four. Again, third down and long. Jerome Collins comes in, possibly bringing the play from the bench. They need to take it out across midfield to the 47-yard line. Notre Dame 50% tonight, 5 of 10 and third down conversion. See the blitz coming, got away from it, now going to go long, and this ball is intercepted, and that is Williams. Eric Williams at the far sideline, 35-40. At the 45-yard line is tackled by the quarterback, Brady Quinn. Brady Quinn tried to make something happen. Seeger on pressure. Eric Williams in man-to-man -man coverage picks this football off. Brady Quinn waited too long to throw the football on the deep throw. And the decision, as you could see, the receivers... Nobody was just wide open, but the two inside receivers were far more ahead of their defender than was the one he chose. That was a big interception by Eric Williams. He took it high at its highest point. Good field position again for Oregon State's offense. They, they've been scrimmaging around midfield or on the Notre Dame side of the 50 all night long. Anderson. Pass right over the middle, got it complete at the 38-yard line. And that's Mike Haas, who was there sliding down 15 yards on the completion. 
Derek Anderson very well coached at quarterback by Paul Christ moves around very well has a delivery where he gets in a crouch situation and uh, you have to work on standing a little bit taller in the pros but uh, he has really uh, developed this quarterback under Paul Christ. Anderson pumps it once. Here comes a screen back into the boundary. Got it complete, and that is uh, Dwight Wright. And Wright is going to be close to a first down. In fact, he may have it at the 28-yard line. Roy Schooning, redshirt freshman, the right guard we talked about back in the first half. Good block in the play. That's their run, the screen pass. That's protecting the passer. They can't run the football against Notre Dame's front seven. Not a good running football team all year, but screens and delays are the things that will protect the quarterback. See the blitz right up the middle. They pick it up, quick pass over the middle, caught for the tight end, down to the 21-yard line. Joe Newton saying, hey, I'm going to kind of throw this thing back and forth between these two big mitts. Abby Mary finally made the tackle on him, but it's it's a gain of it's going to be about what eight yards in the play. That's why he's going to be a pro. See right there, he sees the blitz, delivers the ball, quick release, gets it to Joe Newton. Makes you pay for blitzing. Five receptions tonight, one touchdown, an average of almost 12 yards per reception. Well, receiver went inside. He threw it outside. Joe Newton, I assume, was the intended receiver. Play fake again. <laughs> they're, they're running fake. They have not run the football very successfully, but uh, they're still trying to hold those linebackers in yeah, there. That, that's like ordering a double cheeseburger and getting a diet. So then. Dwight White is the lone man in the backfield. Right is offset a little bit to the left. He's here for blocking purposes. Right over the middle. Nice defense. Knocked down by Dwight Ellick, the senior out of Syracuse. Intended receiver was Marcel Love, the slot back. They're really doing a good job on Joe Newton. They're putting a linebacker on top of him. Try to hold him up right here as a linebacker, trying to hold Joe Newton up at the line of scrimmage. Mike Goosby. So Cerna comes in to attempt the field goal 0 for 2 tonight. Missed from 37 and from 52. This is going to be a 38 yard attempt from the near hash mark. Good pass. Nice easy motion on this one, and he splits it. So let's go to commercial. 9-16 left in this third quarter. 24-7, Oregon State. Charlie Weiss when we return. Alexis Cern on the far sideline had missed his first two field goal attempts tonight. Puts his ball club up 24-7. Here is kick track. And you'll be able to see, in fact, it shows the computer does as you stop it right there as it goes through it uh, within it's seven feet inside. So a very good kick, particularly from that uh, distance. And you also can see that uh, with the height that it uh, crossed the crossbar, that uh, kick would have been good from 49 yards. So that is an interesting assessment that the computer makes. Exclusively tracking technology from ESPN. And it indicates exactly the position of the ball as it goes through the uprights. John Daly, who kicked off to begin the second half, has come out to kick off to the Fighting Irish. This is a high spinner, and it is returnable. It comes down at the five-yard line to Hoskins. Hoskins had a steam, and it'll take it out 25 and out to the 30-yard line. And as we promised, Charlie Weiss, the new head coach for Notre Dame, uh, very nice to stay up very late in the East and uh, stay up on the phone and, and visit 
Charlie, you're watching this game on television. I guess my first question, though, that everybody would like to know is the dual role of uh, offensive coordinator for the Patriots and now the head coach at Notre Dame. It has to really have your head spinning. You need more than 24 hours in a day, don't you? No, you just, uh, I think that we've, fortunately, the last two weeks have been an equalizer because in the dead you know the dead zone of recruiting you only can call each each recruit one time a week anyway so uh, I've been able to find enough time to do my duties with the Patriots and call every one of the recruits myself personally last week and I'm doing it again this week pass right there complete to uh, Schmidt Mike Godfrey jumping here on the conversation. He said he's game for anything. Okay, Charlie, about your staff. If you hired anybody right now, and uh, what are you looking for? The coach, the staff will be totally in place within seven days. Okay. And I think that uh, for leaking information on staff would have been disrespectful to the guys that are there coaching this game right now. Right. And I just don't think that's the way, the proper way of doing business. I think when these guys get back, you know, I think that we've I've already done due diligence as far as the staff went. And I think that coming in, there were two areas of concern. Obviously, the primary one was finding good football coaches and just as importantly, finding guys that could recruit. So I think that when the composition of my staff comes out, you'll find out that I think that we, we succeeded on both ends. Charlie, if you had to say how recruiting is going right now, you know, what... How would you classify it? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, we've made some serious headway here in the last three weeks because we don't have, at least in my case, don't have the relationships like other people that have been dealing with kids for the last couple of years to sell as, a, as you know, one of the products. Really, I have two things to sell. The University of Na Notre Dame, first and foremost, because really that's why the kids should be going to the school. And second of all, that just my name. And I don't, uh, right off the bat, I, I cut right through it and get to the players and say, look, man, I'm not going to sit there and tell you I've known you for the last two years and you know, I know everything about your parents and your girlfriend and everything else. We get right down to business. And I think that that's, that's the approach I have to take, that this is a business approach. We want to sell Notre Dame because Notre Dame is the product. And I think that once kids look at the education you can get from Notre Dame, and be part of the reason why Notre Dame starts winning, I think it's a lot easier to sell than, than a lot of other people seem to think it's going to be. Hey Charlie, I wish you good luck on the Super Bowl. Bill Belichick and your staff have done a great job. That would take you into February? Is that right? Well, yeah, the Super Bowl is the first week in February. Okay. But one thing that ha has happened, well, there's two things that have happened if you look at it. Next week, we've achieved a buy. So the first week in January is going to be a big recruiting week, which I'll be able to be there along with my wife, and they can, you know, get a uh, hands-on a hands-on visit with me, both with them and their parents. And I think that's going to be a critical week that you know Bill and and I have all already worked out, where it's, it's not going to conflict with our schedule here. And then if it does go all the way to February, God willing. By the way, you should be rooting for that, not rooting against that. They're going to, there's, there would be another uh, week in between because there's two weeks in between the Super Bowl giving you the last week in January as well. Oregon State back on offense here and just waiting to see the screen pass is dropped. Charlie, let me ask you, how many, I, I say how many, I, I doubt that you can remember exactly, but just the fact you have had the record that you have had with the Patriots and, in fact, every place that you've been, but you walked in to see the kids at Notre Dame wearing a big Super Bowl ring, and, and up-and-coming players, I mean, that's what they want to see happen. Ultimately, they'd like to wind up on the next level. How much do you think it has helped you with your pro experience and the success that you have derived, and particularly in the immediate past? Well, two, that, that question has to be answered in two parts here. The first part is the first thing I had to do when I get, got into Notre Dame is get, get the team under control, not in a negative sense, but, you know, there was a lot of instability and a lot of hurt feelings. You know, Tyrone was a great high-character guy, and as I told the team the first time I talked to him, I said, man, the only reason I'm here is because you went 6-5, and five, and that's just not good enough. So that was, you know... I think that once they spent two days with the team and kind of sued that over, I think that I got them back on the same page of where we're going to be heading here in the near future. And then the second thing, you talk about recruiting tool as far as 
recruiting tool as far as the coaching in the NFL and knowing that everyone really would want to eventually play on Sundays. Let's not kid ourselves. These guys are picking, picking colleges for, for three reasons. Okay, number one should be because of the education. Number two is because of the relationships that they have with coaches there. And number three is to get an opportunity to play on Sundays. Well, I can't sell part two, but I certainly can sell part one and three. Michael, one quick question here. We're going to have to wrap this up. We appreciate his time, but you got Charlie. Try to explain. Uh, you went to Notre Dame. Your feelings on being named the head coach? Well, you know, there's very few jobs that you aspire to to attain as you're working your way your way up the ranks. Very few jobs, and to be able to go back to your alma mater and be be part of the reason that that the program rose back to the top. Okay, you can't ask for a better opportunity than that. So, as everyone, you know, looks at Notre Dame as being relatively flat now, okay, I think that these recruits out there can be part of the reason, part of the reasons to turn this around, and so can Charlie Weiss. Charlie, uh, a positive note, uh, partially blocked kick, only 18 yards in that one. Notre Dame takes it over with good field position. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's very late in the East. Good luck to you and the Patriots, and also, of course, at Notre Dame. Oh, thank you very much. Let's take a timeout. 24-7, to 7, Oregon State. <clears throat> so we appreciate uh, Charlie Weiss's time. Uh, he's looking for perfection, speaking of that. Perfection by uh, Randy Johnson right here in this ballpark May the 18th of this year as he threw a perfect game for uh, some numbers on uh, Quinn 7 to 14 79 yards and one touchdown has been sacked two times and Oregon State's offense That's good job of the defense of Notre Dame yeah. Notre Dame good adjustments Puts it on a hip, gonna go long, and the crossing route got him there. That is Shamarza, and he is finally gonna be tackled at the 20-yard line. That's a gain of 30. Musin finally put a stop on it. A great fake by Brady Quinn. Putting the ball on his hip, giving his receiver Shamarza time to come open. A good call by Kent Beer and the offensive staff. So you also have to give credit to the offensive line. That that pattern takes a long time to develop, and the offensive line kept him off of it. Two tight ends in the ball game now. First down and ten at the Oregon State 20. They'll keep it on the ground. Running play. Legs churning. Couple of yards, and that'll be it. As Bray comes in to make the stop on Ryan Grant. Trent Bray, the leading tackler on this Oregon State team, second in the Pac-10 with solo tackles. Well, with this tonight, uh, he surpasses Joe Theismann on the uh, all-time list as far as for a single season moves into second place. The number is 2,480. Joe Theismann somewhere saying way to go Brady. Second down and long. Looking looking. Well, he throws to a guy that's got some close coverage but does a nice job of it. Has it complete to Palmer and they're going to be close to the first down but not quite enough. Now it'll bring up third down. What's this going to be about still two and a half to three yards? Brady Quinn doing a good job here in the second half. Ball handling the fake and then finding the open receiver. Taking the time. Now his offensive line, as you mentioned, doing a better job of protecting the passer. But the play action fake by Brady Quinn has affected the defense of the Beavers. Third down, if they want to keep it going, they've got to take it down. You see the other line is just outside the 10. Blitz off the corner, running play. They run away from it. First and 10, that's Darius Walker. It'll be first and goal. They'll spot it down at the seven and a half yard line. Alvin Smith defensively. Did a good job here at Notre Dame, blocking down and leading with the tight end. Pisano. Darius Walker picks up the first down. Good hard run. Number 68, Ryan Harris. 
with a very good uh, block on the play. Only a sophomore out of Minneapolis. Now they bring in Marcus Wilson, number 11 at tailback. First and goal, Notre Dame. They roll the pocket, throws it back, and caught by one of the linemen inside the five. It's Ryan Harris, who we were just talking about, who obviously was eligible on the play. Browner a little bit shaken up as he came up to tackle the 290-pound Harris. And look at it one more time. Good job by Brady Quinn selling the sprint out, throwing back to his big tackle, six foot five, 289, Ryan Harris. Good job by Bronner making that stop. That's a load. <laughs> Ask Ellison. <laughs> and also Bronner, who out there trying to make the stop. Well, the play whistled back in. Plenty of time on the play clock. 17 seconds down to 16. Inside three minutes to play third quarter. And the Irish trying to get back in this one. They're down 24 to 7. Pitch goes to Walker. Blocker in front. Turns it up. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Anthony Fasano with an outstanding block on the play. Number seven for Darius Walker. And Fitzpatrick is perfect. State a timeout. New ball game and our new score. Oregon State 24 and Notre Dame 14. You take one more look at Walker scoring from five yards out. We have 240 left in the third. Can this be the momentum swing that the Irish need? Take a timeout. ESPN's presentation of the 2004 Insight Bowl. Brought to you by Insight, provider of IT solutions for the way you work. And in part by City, proud sponsor of the 2005 Rose Bowl, New Year's Day on ABC. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Part of the uh, capacity house here tonight at uh, the Bank One Ballpark. Of course, the, uh, the D-backs play baseball here, but this is the setup that they have for football. Very cozy confinement. Very nicely done by the inside bowl. Here's the kick. Boy, Fitzpatrick gets all of this one. It'll come to the goal line. And Heron to return. Tagged at the 11-yard line and now being pushed back. And hang on. Mo beginning to lean toward the gold helmets here. Oregon State needs to do something to get the monkey off their back quickly. So let's take a timeout. Corey Mays was downfield on that hit. We'll take a break. 10-point game, 24-14. Well, a good look right there at the interim head coach at Notre Dame. And the reason for the beef, our red hat goes on the field when there is a television timeout to let the players, the coaches, and the officials know that we are away for commercial. We went to break. The red hat was on the field, not quite as far out as he usually is. Somebody started the 25-second clock, and Notre Dame thought they had a delay of game violation. They were all excited, and Doyle Jackson has to say, we're still in television timeout. You know, no, no flag. flag on the play. The Notre Dame fans right here in this end zone where Oregon State's in, making a lot of noise that Notre Dame band in yeah. the end zone. Yeah, you see the proximity. The band is right there. The fans are right there. And they are right on Derek Anderson and the offense. Anderson goes with a running play. It'll be nothing. 
fight making to tackle on right. Running game is not there for Oregon State. Notre Dame too tough up front to handle the running game. And we talked about all these players from Notre Dame have been through the coaches and really came out here fired up in the second half and have really made a statement. Second down and 10. Play action by Anderson. Pressure. Ball is caught right over the middle by Joe Newton. And because he is 6'7", Zivakowski just did not have a chance to knock the ball away from him. Ball perfectly thrown, and watch the effort by the tight end and the catch. Well, Derek Anderson's under pressure to get the ball to Joe Newton. He got hit as he threw the football. Here's the rush on Derek Anderson, the fake. Nobody from Notre Dame taking the fake and the contact after the fake. Greg Pauley is the man who got in and tagged him. So it's a first down, and that quieted the crowd a little bit as far as the Notre Dame faithful. Ball just across the 34. Anderson, play action, lobs this one, got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he overthrew it. And boy, Anderson is really upset with himself because he knows that he had Mike Haas. There was double coverage, but the safety was way too late coming over. That was six. Derek Anderson tonight, breakdown of passes, wide receivers, running backs, and tight ends are very important <laughs> in Mike Riley's offense. And Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, So that stopped the clock at 118 left in the third. Anderson under pressure drills the ball that is caught short of the first down. But that's Josh Hawkins the junior out of Long Beach Poly Brandon Hoyt comes over to make the tackle on him. That's a big hit too, but Brandon Hoyt, because when you can make them Oregon State third and one, they have indecision because they haven't been able to run the football, so they have to maybe think about throwing the ball here on third and one. Well, look at the yellow line. They need about a yard and a half short drop pumped it once now throws the ball got a complete in the flat and that is a good job of pitch and catch right there the defender couldn't play him any closer without drawing a flag and then Marcel Love the slot back was right here uh, Paul Crest again the offensive coordinator he knows he can't run the football so he picks the short passing game the option route to Marcel Love Paul Crest uh, Rick Crest the brother Mid-American Conference Commissioner Jeep Chris, he's a coach in the NFL. This is a family of uh, athletic people, and Paul Chris is one of the top guys in the country offensively. Anderson now 24 of 38, 293, and three touchdowns. They keep it on the ground in this running play. Going to be very close to a first down with Wright on the draw. Notre Dame not looking for the running play. That is the end of the third quarter. So let's call a timeout. 24 to 14, Oregon State leading the Irish. And Notre Dame trying to mount an attack, build some more momentum. Back for the final 15 right after this. And we are back. Two uh, young fans enjoying the ball game tonight. One on the right uh, doesn't seem to be quite as enthused as. No, they're from Ohio. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> they're Buckeye fans, are they? They're, no, they're just from Ohio. Bearcat fans, I'm told. They're, yeah. They're Notre Dame and Oregon State fans tonight. That's right. This is a great crowd here. John Junker, uh, who runs this bowl game, done another great job. Second down and short, Oregon State, 45,917. That is a new record for the inside bowl. Play action, a little 
Flea flicker, ball comes back, and it is thrown complete down to the 12-yard line. Gillette on the receiving end, and it's good for 31 yards. Every now and then you have a gimmick play, and you set it up. Cole first. And this was very well designed. George Gillette gets open. Quinn Burrow on coverage, and uh, Derek Anderson under pressure through that football. Better watch Joe Newton down here again because the field shrinks for Oregon State without a running game. It shrinks for the defender also when you're covering Joe <laughs> because he is so huge. Gillette in motion. They're going to go with a running play. It's a surprise. Right being pushed back. That's called a keep you honest play. Mike Riley's done a nice job here with this team. Got off to a tough start. LSU, we had that game. Boise let him have it. And uh, he kept this football team together. Ninth play of the drive. It all started back at the 10 yard line. Oregon State, 14 in the first quarter, 7 in the second. They started rapidly. Notre Dame didn't score until late in the second, and now they've scored again here in the third. Oregon State has added a, a field goal. Flag is down, and that's going to come back. And that's exactly where they went. They went to Joe Newton, but uh, the man outside on the right for Oregon State was moving, was out of his stance. And instead of second and nine, it's going to be a second down and 14. Foul is a dead ball. Ball start. 89 on the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Repeating the second down. I don't think it was 89. No, I, I thought it was Dan end. Haynes, uh, number 83. 83 was split out behind yeah. beyond him. Yeah, Joe Newton wouldn't like that being called for a penalty. Yeah, there. see, Joe was inside. Haynes was on the outside of him. A well thrown ball again. <laughs> Penalties tonight. Notre Dame only one time for five yards. Five against Oregon State for a total of 45. Oregon State, uh, second most penalized team in the country this year. going to say now Mike Haas number 28 is going to be the target for Derek Anderson all right let's keep an eye on him as they come out of the huddle I think that's him yeah top of the screen out to the right Anderson looking going to try to take off Got by one tackler and throws this one a hook shot over his shoulder. <laughs> and because he's outside the tackle box and he got it beyond the line of scrimmage, <laughs> you're not graded on aesthetics. Derek Landry puts the pressure on Derek Anderson. <laughs> I wasn't uh, kidding. Bill Walton hook shot. No, don't don't make Bill look bad. That was not a, a Bill Walton hook shot. Some other guys I could name, but I won't. Got to be third down. They need to take it down to the two-yard line. It's tougher again for Oregon State because not having a running game down here. Anderson under heavy pressure. Ball is caught. Did he get in? They're going to say stopped just short of the first down. It's Marcel Love. Well, he's close. He got a good spot. Still does not appear to have the first down. It did have a good spot. I think Oregon State's going to go for this. Now. 
Here's what's difficult. You don't have a running game. But Derek Anderson, 6'6", 6'6", 240, you figure get enough push on the quarterback sneak. See Cern on the sideline. He's uh, disappointed. He said, hey, this is a chip shot. Let me go at it. Rushing yards tonight. 12. What they'd like to have is 12 and a half right here. Or even 11 to stop them for a loss. Ball is at the two-yard line. You saw just how many links of the chain. They've got to move the ball to pick up a first. And now Oregon State trying to call a timeout. And the bench able to get a hold of the officials, and they'll call one. They'll stop it with 12.44 left in the third quarter. Ten-point ball game. Oregon State threatening again. So the timeout just about taken this drive. Ten plays, 87 yards. have used up four minutes and 44 seconds. Would be a great time for a play-action fake. Fake the over the top and throw the ball to the tight end. But I still look for the quarterback sneak. Fourth down, inches. Yep, that's what you would suspect with Anderson going under center. Drops very low. Feet slid just a little. I don't know. I don't know. He, well, from where the yellow line is, Epi Amari is there. He slipped just a bit, but yeah. because, as you said, Mike, he's 6'4", and they, where yeah, they put the ball it. down, yeah, he's on the yellow line and beyond. 6'6", so 240, and without a running game, that's pretty well what you got to depend on. Still got to get those last, last two yards <laughs> here with the running game. Dwight Wright, the inside quick back. Ryan Coe's also a power runner at 233. See who they go with. Oregon State quickly out of the huddle and back to the line of scrimmage. First and goal. Anderson, fade route, looks for the end zone. That's touchdown. Newton now. Any flag? No. Newton did a nice job of pushing yeah. the defender off and probably should have been flagged. You throw a fade and you move your tight end and you split him out 6-7. Derek Anderson put the ball up for grabs like a jump ball in basketball. Good drive by Oregon State. So the extra point attempt coming by Cerna. And he's got it. So we'll take a timeout. Oregon State now on top, 30 to 14. We have 12-17 left in the ball game. ESPN's presentation of the 2004 Insight Bowl. Brought to you by Insight, provider of IT solutions for the way you work. And in part by City, proud sponsor of the 2005 Rose Bowl, New Year's Day on ABC. And Chrysler, inspiration comes standard. So we are back. 31 to 14, 17 point margin now. And Newton has really done his share of damage tonight. He's got two touchdowns in the ball game and in total catches. Let's see, what have we got him for? Seven for a total of 85 and two touches. For all those Pac-10 coaches, he's a sophomore. <laughs> so you're going to be seeing a lot of him. Well, you see a lot of him when you just look at him once, Mike. But I know what you mean as far as longevity coverage on the kick team and let's check down on the sideline Aaron Andrews what do you got for us all right Ron I've got Tim Crown the chairman and founder of inside he wanted to make sure I got that in the eighth year you guys have put this bowl on and you just saw 45,000 plus attendance record tonight 
How does that sound? We love it when fans come out and watch football in a baseball stadium. It's just we're the only place in the country where they do it, and we love it out here in Phoenix. Now let's talk about that. I didn't know that. This is the only bowl that is played here at a baseball ballpark. Why here? We just think it's a great venue. Every seat's a great seat in the house, and it's something unique, something different. It's all about insight. And you got to tell us, those fans behind us, who are they? Those are all our employees here from the Phoenix branch. And that's a great seats for them. And special note, what will you do with this turf that you brought in? We donate the turf every year to a local high school for their own field. What high school will get it this year? I am not positive. <laughs> well, all you high schools out there in Phoenix, maybe you'll get this. Ron, we're going to send it back up to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, Aaron, thanks. I was thinking about every high school is on the phone yeah, right everyone's now. Everyone's on the phone right now. Hey, listen, my wife's on the phone. That's good. With I'd like it in my lawn. <laughs> oh, this is uh, Aaron just added to all the high schools uh, <laughs> wish list for Christmas. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, the, uh, the Insight Bowl champion trophy, and that's what it looks like right there. Well, they fake the reverse now. They throw the screen at Darius Walker. Walker, 35, still fighting, comes out to the 38. That's enough for the first down. So they'll move the chains and keep it going. A gain of 13 on the play. Been very impressed with Brady Quinn here in the second half. Ball handling, good faking, poise, standing in the pocket, delivering the ball to Darius Walker. Freshman running back. A lot of good young players here at Tyrone Willingham going to leave behind defensively eight senior starters yeah. yeah that's where they that's where they really get uh, the big blow Quinn steps up right into the defender delivers his pass and it is almost intercepted Piscatelli misjudged it but they put pressure on Brady Quinn. He got hit. The pass rush by Oregon he steps State's up into defense. It. <laughs> right in the sternum. It was Trent Bray. His dad was the defensive coordinator for Dennis Erickson at Oregon State. And so his dad's real proud of Trent Bray and his effort as a linebacker he's played three different positions he's played the middle outside the other outside nine tackles tonight and one sack very productive evening Grant comes back in the ball game at tailback and they'll give it to him left side boy penetration again he can't get off the snide that's got to be a loss of three yards in the play Jonathan Pollard there to make the tackle well Charlie Weiss don't have doesn't have the Indianapolis Colts and Jets to worry about, but he do, does have to go to Pittsburgh in Michigan. Then he gets Michigan State at home. A welcome uh, September 24th. Tyrone Willingham will try to give him a welcome at Purdue. So for the first five games on the road. Well, he's got a stretch of five at home, but when you look at the stretch, <laughs> it's not a stretch that is a real stretch. I mean, the SCBYU, Tennessee, maybe in Syracuse. Pressure from the backside, and that is an incomplete pass. His arm was going forward, hit by Keith Ellison. This defensive football team just comes after you. If you're a quarterback who gets Oregon State, you're going to take helmets in the back and the sternum everywhere. Keith Ellison with a good hit. We need to check his number of tackles as well because <coughs> Keith has recorded uh, a total of eight tonight. And Strotter is uh, the deep man. High pass. Fitzpatrick able to get it and then get the kick away. That's a heck of an effort right there. Uh, Notre Dame will touch it dead at the 41 yard line. 23 yards on the kick, but a miracle that he got anything. One more look at uh, what DJ Fitzpatrick had to deal with. 
so we'll take a break. 31-14, Oregon State. So we're back, 31 to 14, Oregon State on top, and here's a bit of news. Uh, Joe Newton, the tight end, his two TD catches ties an inside bowl record shared by seven other players. Oregon State, Ron, us think about their start, one and four. You talk about a good coaching job, that when you're one and four, everything, the wheels have come off. You steady the ship and go on and win four of the last five. Five of the last six. Excuse me. They're going to try to run it a little bit here. This is Bernard. And Ber right, right, I beg your pardon. 29. Zubokowski coming in to make the tackle. White right, you talked about him, Ron. He tweaked his knee versus Oregon. He didn't practice much, but let's give a good effort here tonight. Well, he's another one that's not real large. I'm not sure about the five nine business. Forty two passes, twelve rushes. I said I thought they'd get to sixty, but uh, they'll get to fifty. Anderson sets deep right over the middle. Got a running target and incomplete. Mike Haas couldn't hold on. Well, that's unusual. Burrell with the cover. And so that stops the clock at 9.58. <laughs> he was open. I mean, wide open. He took a couple of steps with the ball, just couldn't bring it in. Just never could get a hold of it. Eyes, as you see his helmet, his eyes going downfield. Didn't look it in. So third down, and they need to take it to the 48 and a half yard line to keep this one going. Pressure and Anderson goes down. I don't know who they'll give credit to because he actually slipped down the turf. Yep. Aaron's turf. Derek Anderson, the blitz by Notre Dame, not picked up. Derek Anderson just goes down. So punt number three for Oregon State tonight. Palescu averaging 39 as long as 42. Boot driving spiral, best kick of the night. On the run, it is going to hit and stay in the field of play and go dead at around the 12 yard line. Hoskins had to run away from that one. Well, right now, let's take a look at our Applebee's hometown hero Ben Siegert, Glendale, Arizona, Oregon State defensive tackle. Two tackles in this ball game tonight. For the player of the game, he should get five yards of turf. First, first high school or his home, whatever he wants to use it for. What a country. Restaurants don't give turf. They give no, food. No, the turf here. No. Aaron's turf. She's given away. This is Grant. Tries to turn the corner, and he's going to be stopped after a couple of yards. I just keep thinking about Notre Dame, what their players have gone through, the coaches. I think they've done a good job here tonight trying to react to what has happened. Ken Bear's done a nice job assembling this team, working them. Made good adjustments at halftime. Oregon State just too strong passing the football. And particularly early. I mean, they came out yeah. and did what they have been doing the last half of the season, and that's striking and striking early. Got that pass complete. That's good for a first down to McKnight. 
So let's do a report card here, Mike. Uh, what run. they did tonight. Did they chew up the clock with the run? Nope. Did they beat man coverage? Nope. Did they keep the ball in front of them? Nope. Did they make Oregon State turn it over? No. All notes. I, I wouldn't give a grade. I just all those. Okay. Very fair, teacher. Because they gave effort. That's all you can ask. Yeah, that's right. And they have done that. Under eight minutes to play. Here comes an all-out blitz this time. They turn and hand it off to Grant. And Grant's going to take it out to the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and about four as they pick up close to six on the play. Kevin Davidson has now come in replacing Gray at that middle linebacking spot. Notre Dame taking a lot of time here. Still time enough if he can quick strike. I haven't seen the leprechaun tonight. See, that's it. They're so small. I'm seeing. Yeah, he's down there. There he is. There he is. Pass caught. That's a nice athletic move. Samarza turned completely around and caught the ball, which was thrown behind him. It's good for 16 yards. See, we show the leprechaun, and then they complete a 16-yard pass. Samarza. Some to that. All right, there he is again. There he is again. He's dancing. I hope he is. I hope it's not a reaction to anything. pass over the middle and it is caught at the 28-yard line by McKnight. That is as good a job with the pass and catch as the Irish have done tonight. Piscatelli was all over him and they just couldn't do anything about it. See, this is the guy that's getting Notre Dame going. Brady Quinn with the throw. But good pass protection here. Oregon State kept out of there. You give quarterback time. He finds a receiver. McKnight Good throw here. Nice protection by the offensive line. Pretty reared back and, uh, and threw that. Pitch to Grant. Tries to turn the corner. Loses his footing. And he'll lose the yard. Keith Ellison with still another tackle. He's close to double figures. In fact, he is now in double figures. Ellison. The last six bowl games, you see the losses. The Fiesta Orange Independent. Gator Fiesta Gator. 79 teams have won bowl games since Notre Dame last won a bowl game. Connecticut won them. Randy Edsel, first time for a bowl game. Collins in motion. He throws back to the near side. Caught and then dropped at the six yard line is McKnight. Eric Williams covering on him just couldn't hold on. Ron, you're going to be hearing about Eric Williams. He's going to play on Sundays, too. He's a corner that can really wrap up a receiver. McKnight right there with him. And you ask corners to play man for man all night. Bump and run. That's asking a lot. They got two good ones, Eric Williams and Brandon Browner. The Browner name in Notre Dame is big. Third down. Third down and about ten and a half for the first down. Far sideline. Got a man there and he gathered it in. Samarza makes the catch. The ball actually again thrown behind him. And the defensive back had turned the wrong direction. So it was away from him. Got it on Brandon Browner. Samarza with a great concentration. A great catch. Jumps first down, Notre Dame. The ball at the 13 and a half yard line. Clock about to go under five minutes left in this inside bowl in Phoenix, 2004. Asano in motion. See if they look for him. Here comes pressure. Going to have to hurry and dumps it off, and the ball's incomplete. And he got lucky 
Powers Neal had the tip of the ball touch the ground, and that's good. They would have lost big yardage. Keith Ellison was the man coming applying the pressure. I'd like to see Notre Dame but quicker the line of scrimmage. I and mean, they're still in this football game, only down 17 points. Taking their time getting the line of scrimmage and burning a lot of clock. Couple one side kicks away. Well, the Leprechaun's still <laughs> moving. But see, he's not moving as quickly. No. It's just something in the night. Collins in motion and the left tackle. You can see Ryan Harris came out of his stance. So they'll march back five yards. It'll be second down and 15 rather than second down and 10. Storied program, the Leprechaun and Notre Dame football. That was a dead ball. Ball start. Brady Quinn's numbers. One touchdown. Second half. 143 yards. Open it up more. My favorite player, Notre Dame, Paul Horn. Heisman Trophy winner. Made his mark. One of the few Heisman Trophy winners to win when the team had a losing record. Look to the left. Not there. Goes back to the right. And the ball caught. One hand. Knife brought it in. How about that? Went up, gathered it with his right hand, pulled it into his body over Williams. That's what I say. Yeah. I mean, there are a couple onside kicks from being in this football game, but they burn a lot of time. Foul is pass interference by number eight. So it's touchdown Notre Dame. They get this extra point, get the onside kick. You know, there's two scores away here. Fitzpatrick will try to make it a 10-point ball game. And he does. Well, as we go to break, one more look at uh, Raymond McKnight watching gather this in with the right hand. Then pull it into his body for the touchdown of Williams. So it's a 10 point ball game. 10 point ball game, and uh, we we're discussing during the timeout. Need you to write down your uh, players of the ball game. Well, that's easy. Derek Anderson for Oregon State. Put a second for Joe Newton. And Brady Quinn for Notre Dame. But it, I know where everybody's got to vote on that. That's just my picks. Onside kick. You got an onside kick. You get the ball back. Still, Irish got three timeouts. The Leprechaun still alive here. My man is dancing. He, he knows he's still alive. Well, Joe Newton, one of the uh, big targets on the hands team. There he is right there. Ball bounces high. Bounced forward by Oregon State and picked up by Oregon State inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Wow. They had a chance at it. Brandon Browner. That was a smart play to, oh. to, to hit the ball and knock it forward right here. That's why you put your DBs with the best hands, your receivers, your quarterbacks on the hands team. Very fortunate that to recover that football. I thought it was Williams there that, uh, that actually pushed it forward, made a swipe at it. Notre Sports Dame. Center coming up next. Still can get the ball back because Oregon State cannot run the football. Three timeouts left for the Irish. Anderson steps up right over the middle, got him wide open, and there's Haas. And being pushed back to the 14 yard line. 
Haas with a good route. Mike Haas, the play fake by Derek Anderson. Inside of Notre Dame's Burrell. Clock runs 425, now 424. And Oregon State with a first and goal. Right inside the five, down to around the two and a half yard line. And the report card, as far as Oregon State is concerned. Okay, Ron, I'd write a phrase here. Did they protect Eric Anderson? I'm going to ask you. Yeah. Yes. A. Did they throw 60 times? No. But they threw <laughs> almost 50. Not did happy with the number they did throw, I'll tell you that. Did they have strong first quarter start? Yes. Did they stop the run? Yes. Oregon State did all the things necessary to control this game. So it's a second down and goal. You see the ball just about two and a half yards away. Anderson pressure back to the end zone overthrown. Newton the intended receiver and Newton gets another one. It's a new inside bowl record for three touchdowns in a ball game. Joe Newton was well covered and Notre Dame has figured out in the red zone they like to go to Joe Newton. Seven receptions 85 yards two touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised a run here. Right right right. Try to slide him in there. to the give it to right side right touchdown Oregon State hope they have enough fireworks here the leprechaun's not dancing now you know time to put up the dancing shoes I think here with 319 yeah. uh, showing on the clock and that makes it a 37 to 21 ball game Preston Jackson trying to make the tackle, couldn't bring him down. Been an exciting game, though, Ron, uh, and then still Notre Dame. I'm impressed with the way they played. Played hard. John Junker, uh, Sean Scheffler, they, they did a great job running this bowl. So let's take a timeout. 319 remaining. 38-21, 17 point Beaver lead. Security here at Bank One Ballpark. And Oregon State, boys, second time in a row here in this city. Yeah. Talk about well, actually, bowl the games. other yeah. is talk, Tempe. Talk about the bowl games, though. This, this has been exciting here. This crowd, stadium. Kick coming down to the goal line, and it's Hoskins. And he's going to be stopped just across the 25. Well, tonight's player of the game is brought to you by Capital One. <laughs> and okay. and uh, they are. They're slow in coming up because this one is under protest. Oh, I see you guys outvoted me. Joe Newton, seven receptions, 85 yards, two touchdowns. The Capital One player of the game. And... Obviously, his quarterback had an outstanding oh. evening. Eric Anderson. You'll see him on uh, pro football. I think you'll see 89 in pro football also. A little shovel pass right here. Oh, my goodness, what a hit. Matt Shelton, who was not supposed to play tonight, probably right now is wishing he hadn't. Ball, it was down. Didn't lose the fumble. Darkens is the man who made the hit, number 42. So almost one of those turn out the lights. So. Swan Cup was the man down yeah. at the bottom of the pile. Always got to give him credit. Oh, what a player, Swan Cup. Yeah, he is. Notre Dame going to take a timeout run. 
And do you be excited about that? Derek Anderson. Ron, I know you are you guys all and I think the truck is powerful here, but Derek Anderson. You're a pass, first touchdown pass, under pressure, delivers that score to Joe Newton. Roll out right there. Pains. Lose the pocket. Fade to Newton. Derek Anderson, his last game with Mike Riley. Mike Riley told Aaron Andrews that uh, he wishes Derek Anderson would have redshirted to have him back another year. Impressed with the job that Mike Riley and his staff have done. Well, they came back from nowhere, I can tell you that. Yeah. Aaron Andrews, let's uh, check with you down on the sideline. What do you got for us? Well, Ron, in speaking with Ken Bear today, he said the hardest part of tonight's game would be right now. When the time is winding down here in the fourth quarter, he said he'd be thinking about those players he's developed relationships with, his coaching staff that he's been with Notre Dame for three years. He said, you know, a lot of these coaches, they don't know where they're going to be in the next couple of days. He's thinking about their families, the the fact that no one knows where any of these guys are going to be in coach Godfrey you obviously know what it's like to be in this position this moment is very hard for these guys right now it's uh, Ron you talk about that the assistant coaches that don't have jobs and they're not going to be a part of this team anymore well, McKnight coming back trying to make that catch that'll stop the clock at 225 Bill Bunnell Scott Johnson uh, they were at the last Notre Dame win 79 different teams have won a bowl game since Notre Dame defeated AM. Cotton Bowl. But I can tell you this Ken Bear and his staff gave all the effort you could possibly give to change that tonight. Aaron's right, it's going to be a sad locker room. Blitz coming right up the middle, steps up, throws the short pass, and the tackle made on Wilson. Yeah, the seniors uh, held a meeting last night. The coaches left the room, and it was a very emotional thing, and they tried to, uh, to get this team very well prepared. But it was uh, too much Oregon State with just too much firepower early. Well, Brady Quinn, Ron, you talked about his leadership, 16 to 29, had a pretty good second half. Bad field position in the first half. Yeah, every time we talked, Mike, it was either three or four times that Oregon State had the ball in Notre Dame territory. Jeff Price uh, came in to punt that time. Oh. Oh, what a comeback block thrown by one of the Beavers. And in persistence on the part of the special teams. Still going to stop him short of the 20-yard line. Lawson is the man who threw the, the comeback block, number nine. Boy, that was a block. Watch this run. Oh. Mm. That'll be on Sports Center. And the kid bounced right yeah. back up, which is what I was pleased to see. So we got a minute and 30 seconds left in this one. Sports Center coming up next. They're going to tape right now with we'll get that hit. Adam Rothenflu, senior out of Fresno, is going to come in to run the offense here. We're off to a good game. Gary Stoken, the Peach Bowl, Miami and Florida. Yeah, that'll, uh, it's always a battle when all those Florida schools get together. And that's what we'll have on Friday night, Christmas Eve, and then uh, to, to give a promo for, for next week, next Tuesday, down at the Orange Bowl. It will be the national championship game, and this crew will be uh, on ESPN Radio, going to stations all across this country and to uh, Armed Forces Radio all around the world. That uh, game is always a, a delight to do on radio. Well, we thank all our service, men and women. And uh, Ron, let me be the first to uh, welcome in the new year with you. 
Okay. Happy want... New Year. <laughs> hey, listen, thing. Hey, let me say this before our clock is running down 35, now 34 seconds. Again, we thank Charlie Weiss for taking time. I mean, it was very, very late in the East, and I'm not so sure that he wasn't still at the office doing game plans. But uh, anyway, we thank him for taking time to come on. We wish him the very best in the NFL playoffs. And also wish him the very best as the mentor of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish beginning in 2005. Clock is at 8, now 7. And Oregon State will win and win it convincingly. So the two head coaches head to the field for a final handshake. But Oregon State has gotten the best of Notre Dame in a very big margin the last two times that they have played. A final score, Oregon State 38, Notre Dame 21. Coming up next on ESPN at Sports Center, over on ESPN News, it's post-game extra. For more, log on to ESPN.